All right. Well, you know what? I think I'll just go ahead and start talking a little bit um, about what we're doing here today with uh, Ultimate Horror. Right. So, you know, if you if you were around like I was <laughs> at, at the dawn of the computer role playing game, then there are just you know there's a handful of computer role playing games that uh, you know really stand out. You know, there's things like Wizardry or or Might and Magic, but Ultima, the whole Ultima series, is one of those. And Ultima 4 generally stands out as one that is regarded, you know, as like very special in the genre. And we're, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But the, the person who created the Ultima series, Lord British here, um, who is, uh, his name is Richard Garriott. So Richard Garriott is actually a really interesting character. Um, he has, in addition to deciding that he wanted to create these um, role-playing games, even in high school, the first one he made was uh, Kalabeth, <laughs> World of Doom or something. Uh, and he used to sell it, you know, like in baggies on floppy disks. Uh, and then he made the whole Ultima series. You know, he sold the series to Electronic Arts. Uh, but he was also an explorer. Uh, Talking he about went... Sir Richard? Yes, talking about Sir Richard Garriott. He went to um, the International Space Station as the second space tourist um, on a Soyuz. Uh, he went to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, so the like lowest known area in the ocean. Uh, he's been to both the poles, uh, North and South Pole, I mean. Um, and he's, uh, so he's just done all kinds of weird stuff. He, he used to host like a Halloween bash at his castle in Austin, Texas. It's, you know, he'd spend ten, a hundred thousand dollars on this Halloween bash. It was just free to people to come to this haunted house elaborate production he'd put on. I don't think he does that anymore. In fact, he had some crazy fan break into his house. Um, and like, but he just so happened to have an Uzi and fired a warning <laughs> shot and held him at bay until the cops showed up. Right. So really wow. interesting character, really interesting story behind this One guy warning shot with an Uzi? Done. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, they, there's so a, there's like twelve there's or thirteen, single, maybe. There's a single shot selection lever. That's true. Easy. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, he wrote a book actually, and I listened to it as an audio book. But I, I recommend that book. It's it's pretty darn uh, cool. Um, he's just, a character for sure. Yeah, yeah. This guy is a character, and he's a character in his games. And but like I said, he is was very instrumental in the whole um, computer role playing game thing. Even when you talk about really the first sort of, I don't want to say, but mainstream, like the first online role-playing game, computer role-playing game to sort of hit it big and um, just influence the generation of what we have now with World of Warcraft and all that was Ultima Online, right? So that's from this Ultima series that, that he worked on. Um, and so, yeah, you're just talking about impressive stuff. And now what's impressive up to me about Ultima 4 in particular, one of the things that stands out about it is before Ultima 4, I think all of the role play, computer role-playing games were, you know, I'm good guy versus bad guy. But Ultima 4 was not that. It was, hey, the, you know, Ultima 1, 2, and 3, you fought the three baddies and sort of stabilized the realm. And now there's this idea of somebody becoming the avatar, sort of leveling up in the eight virtues and uh, achieving like heightened consciousness or what you know whatever you want to call it, but becoming the avatar. And so it was really about self exploration, and it was interesting because you know in role playing games before you would just go and loot everybody's house. You're like, oh, here's a house. What's in here? Go through their drawers and steal their stuff. You know, whatever. That's just what you did. Like in a Zelda kind of style. Stuff. Yeah, right. I mean, whatever. But in Ultima Four, that would hurt you because that's against you know what are the virtues, right? You know, and if you if you have a dialogue tree with somebody and you brag. Um, then that hurts your humility sort of alignment. And by the way, the idea of having a dialogue tree with somebody was also sort of new. I'm not sure any other game did that before Ultima 4. But even pen and paper role-playing games, I don't remember, I don't know of one before Ultima 4 uh, where you created your character through essentially a personality test, right? It gives you... That's what we're doing here. We're going to do the character creator here uh, in Ultima 4. And it gives you these dilemmas. A and you choose uh, what, in each of these scenarios, which of two choices would you make. And it goes through a series of those. And it tells you which of the eight types of characters you are. So let me see here. The list of characters, uh, character classes, 
in Ultima 4 is Mage, Bard, Fighter, Druid, Paladin, Ranger. Those are all fairly normal. And then Shepherd and Tinker. <laughs> so a Tinker is like uh, sort of a blacksmith, Artificer. engineer, something like that. But, you know, like if you think of a blacksmith, you think of some dude with a big hammer and strong arms. Oh, 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 yeah, you do. Yeah, <laughs> so those are good fighters. I shouldn't say dude, though, because actually, um, you know, I mentioned these eight uh, characters. You start as one of them, and then the uh, one of each of the other types is recruitable um, as uh, a character for your party. Uh, and the tinker in the game was a female. I can't remember her name right now. Unless you played the Nintendo, like the NES version, they switched it to male for some reason. I don't know. That's weird. weird. <laughs> yeah. But the, the original version, you know, was on PC. It came out, I want to say Christmas time of 85. Uh, I remember um, I remember just dying to get this game for the Apple II, right? And, and I got it. It came with multiple discs. You know, you had to swap five and a quarter inch floppies around and stuff. Uh, there were at least four of them, probably more. I can't remember. But man, man, did I love this game. Man, did I love the Ultima series. Um, You're saying this game came out in 85? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It actually won a bunch of awards in 86, but I'm pretty sure it came out around, you know, Black Friday 85. I came out in 84. I haven't been, I beat ah. Ultima by one year. <laughs> Uh, Ultima 1, 2, and 3 came out, I think, 81, 82, 83, something like that. Uh, they all came out. And, and that Alcalabeth World of Doom I mentioned was like 1979 or something. Damn. Um, Why do you, know, you make I, me feel old, Steve? Why? What, no, I mean, you, maybe you missed part of my spiel, but I was talking about how this was awesome to be the, around for the birth of the computer role-playing game. Right? If you played these games, and if you were, you know, waiting for these games to come out, you, you were there for the beginning, right? I mean, it was... It was cool. It was a big deal. I was a beta tester for Ultima Online, you know? Like, um, I may have been working at EA at the time. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, you know, all, all that stuff was, was just cool. I, I don't know, but I, I remember basically salivating over getting this game. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I remember, you know, I was a kid, and it's not like I could just buy it when it came out. It was like, I hope this shows up under the tree, <laughs> you know? I mean, <laughs> computer games uh, were expensive back then i mean they were probably 50 bucks back then and that was a lot more money back then <laughs> compared to you know the 50 60 70 whatever they cost uh today um yeah and you can't just be like oh it came out download it right the, the, the oh little... yeah you had to install configure you had to have the run well, file. but also the town that i lived in didn't and maybe this even predated like electronics boutique or babbages which were the game stops of their day where you would go get the computer games you know i i used to mail order from a catalog like because this is before internet shopping you know like is this was yeah that's when a shady friend can hand you a stack of floppies and go copy this game yeah i did have locksmith different versions of locksmith so i could copy games if i wanted to but uh purely for um, research purposes, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, we're British, actually. I, I think, think made... I think the statute of limitations has run out, Steve, and you're probably safe. Yeah. Lord British, I think, actually made one of my favorite computer games of all time, other than Ultima 4, which was Auto Duel, if you ever played mm -hmm. that back in the day. That was that was absolutely amazing. I mean, if you look at this game, Ultima 4, Quest of the Avatar, you'll, you'll look at it and be like, well, these graphics suck and whatever. But, um, and uh, Auto Duel was just an open world. Build, design and build your own car, drive it everywhere, and shoot in real time, like weapons from the back, left, right, front of your car, you know, all this stuff. And you're talking about running on computers that had 64K of RAM. K. Gra kilobytes. Graphics have recently been invented at that point. So <laughs> being able to see the game in a non-mud setting was yeah, just I mean, wild. A contemporary role-playing game of these Ultima games was Zork, which was text-based yeah. adventure, right? There were no pictures at all. Zork's fun. It's still fun to run through Zork to this day. And I think Moria and Angband and stuff like that weren't even out yet, which are ASCII art mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, dungeon crawlers. Um, so anyway, Ultima 4... Uh, Really loved it, and I wanted to go through the character creator. So, without further ado, I think I'm just going to start doing that. Um, all right. So what, what you have to do wanted is... wanted more ado. You, I, hey, if you wanted more ado, I've got plenty. Uh, <laughs> so, initiate. So you got to give your character a name. All right. So we'll be right. Steven here. Steven? Yeah, and I do, <laughs> I, I do identify as male. So I will do that. 
All right, so I'm going to read through the text here just the first time through. Uh, I, I have this, if you see this up here, I've got this running on DOSBox because I got this from good old games, GOG. Sorry, it's, they don't, they don't mm -hmm. call themselves good old games anymore. It's just GOG.com. Um, I have a CPU speed set on 100%, so I could just skip through this later. Um, but all right, the day is warm, yet there is a cooling breeze. The latest in a series of personal crises seems insurmountable. You're being pulled apart in all directions. Yet this afternoon, walking the countryside slowly brings relaxation to your harried mind. The soil and strain of modern high-tech living begins to wash off in layers. That willow tree near the stream looks comfortable and inviting. The buzz of dragonflies and the whisper of the willow's swaying branches bring a deep peace. Searching inward for tranquility and happiness, you close your eyes. A high-pitched cascading sound like crystal wind chimes impinges on your... Impinges. On your floating awareness. As you open your eyes, you see a shimmering blueness rise from the ground. The sound seems to be emanating from this glowing portal. So the Ultima series has these portals, and that's how you travel around, fast travel around the map. That's where Morrowind got it from. Yeah. <laughs> it is difficult to look at the blueness. <laughs> I, look, at that, look at the blueness there. <laughs> that is a Can classic, you see it? That is a classic quote. It's difficult to look at the blueness. Uh, light seems to bend and distort around it, while the sound waves become so intense they appear to become visible. The portal hangs there for a moment. Then, with the rush of an imploding vacuum, it sinks into the ground. Something remains suspended in midair for a moment before falling to earth with a heavy thud. Somewhat shaken by this vision, you rise to your feet to investigate. A crude circle of stones surrounds the spot where the portal appeared. There is something glinting in the grass. You pick up an amulet shaped like a, shaped like a cross with a loop at the top. That's like the symbol for the avatar in the it's game. An ankh. An ankh, yeah. It is an ankh, the secret symbol of life and rebirth. But this could not have made the thud. So you look around. So you look again and find a large book wrapped in a thick cloth. With trembling hands, you unwrap the book. Behold, the cloth is a map, and within lies not one book but two. By the way, these games back in the day, they would come in a box, and there would be a cloth map, and there would be books nice. to read. Right? I, you used to. I still have those. Yeah, I, I still have them too, actually. But you, you used to open up a game like uh, this and read the manual before you actually played it. I know, it's weird. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a rule book to a game. Is that where our TFM came from? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the map is of a land strange to you, and the style speaks of ancient cartography. The script on the cover of the first book is arcane but readable. The title is The History of Britannia, as told by Kyle the Younger. The other book is disturbing to look at. Its small cover appears to be fashioned out of some sort of leathery hide, but from what creature is uncertain. <laughs> the reddish-black skin radiates an intense aura suggestive of ancient power. It's the Necronomicon. Nice. Maybe it'll bite me like Harry <laughs> Potter, right? The tongue mm -hmm. of the title is beyond your kin. The tongue of the title is beyond your kin. This is full of good stuff. I hear you get 100 points on your SAT if you finish this game. <laughs> You dare not open the book and disturb whatever sleeps within. You decide to peruse the history. Settling back under the willow tree, you open the book. By the way, peruse. Since you mentioned SAT, is one of the words that one of the words people get the definition of wrong all the time. People are like peruse as in to like just casually browse through something, but peruse is to look at stuff in detail. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the opposite of how people use it all the time. Anyway, you read the book of history. No, really. Read the book of history. I don't have it here in front of me, and I wouldn't read the whole thing to you anyway. You'd stop watching the stream if I did. All right. I sure would. <laughs> John would be out first. <laughs> <laughs> Closing the book, you again pick up the ankh. As you hold it, you begin to hear a hauntingly familiar lute-like sound wafting over a nearby hill. Still clutching the strange artifacts, you raise unbidden and climb the slope. Unbidden. I love this. In the valley below you, you see what appears to be a fair. It seems strange that you came that way earlier and noticed nothing. As you mull this over, your feet carry you down towards the site. This is no ordinary traveling carnival, but a renaissance fair. The pennants uh -huh. on the tent tops blow briskly in the late afternoon breeze. I went to a Ren fair this year. Hmm. Normally They're I go so to fun. Yeah, normally I go to the Scottish Highland Games. Well, I guess it wasn't this year. I guess it was like November. Whatever. Less than a year ago. We'll do a Ren fair for the first time. Anyway, well, I always I love to go. I used to go every year, but I haven't recently. Yeah, but. well, there are plenty you know, around here. COVID. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The ticket taker at the Red Fair's gate starts to ask you for money, but upon spotting your onk says, Welcome, friend. Enter in peace and find your path. The music continues to pull you forward amongst 
the merchants, and vendors. Glimpses of fabulous treasures can be seen in some of the shadowy booths. These people are very happy. They seem to glow with an inner light. Some look up as you pass and smile, but you cannot stop. The music compels you to move onward through the crowd. Through the gathering dusk, you see a secluded gypsy wagon sitting off in the woods. The music seems to emanate from the wagon. As you draw near, a woman's voice weaves into the music saying, you may approach, O seeker. Hey, there she is. All right. You enter to find an old gypsy. She doesn't look that old. She looks about 30. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 30 is that old for a... <laughs> yeah, until you increase yeah. the definition. Mm. Yeah, yeah, zoom in. Yeah. yeah, if this was 4K, you'd be like, oh, okay. I was like, I was going to do the old lady voice, but then I saw the picture, <laughs> but then it says, oh, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> she wears an ock around her neck, naturally. In front of her is a round table covered in deep green velvet. I don't see Eric's head on the table, though. But I don't know. <laughs> the room... <laughs> Her robe is blue, and it's hard to look into the blueness. <laughs> the room smells so heavily of incense that you feel dizzy. That's not incense, buddy. That's yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fair right there for you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, there you go. Seeing the Ankh, the ancient gypsy smiles and warns you never to part with it. We have been waiting such a long time, but at last you have come. Sit here, and I shall read the path of your future. All right. This is where we're going to get into the meat of it. I guess I should have figured out whether the stream was actually working, though, huh? Um, well, I did get a screenshot of it. Uh, I'm actually friend's... watching us, so. All right, good. That's good enough to know. All right. Martin's um, watching. Hi, Martin. Hello, Martin. Martin's on? All right, cool. I didn't see any chat, so, yeah. But Okay, so uh, I did mention this game is on good old games. I think all the Ultima games are, including a Calabeth, or most of them anyway. But this one's free. A lot of them are free. So uh, Does it do the DOSBox install, or do you have to get that separately? No, no, it, uh, it does a purpose-built DOSBox install just for Ultima, right? So if you oh, download man. and install from GOG, they, they've got this down to a science, right? It just installs and runs yeah. fine. Yeah, that's so cool. That's great. All right, now we're getting into the meat of it. I'm going to go through this, and then we'll go back, and you all can take a crack at it, too. We're going to see what character classes we land at. Hold on. I think we should guess what we're going to be. Uh, In fact, I well, want to guess what all of you are going to be. All right, well, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm about to go, so you all guess what I'm going to be, and then before each of you, we'll all guess. All right, don't don't read Discord, Stephen. We're going we're gonna to toss all right, guesses. What were the options again? Uh, there, the choices are Mage. Bard, Fighter, Druid, Tinker, Paladin, Ranger, and Shepherd. I did this with so, my... I submitted my guess. I did this with my kids earlier, and one of them was a mage, and the other was a tinker. Where are we? Are we putting them in general? Okay. Yeah, I just put them in general under Martin's post. <laughs> Who's playing Welcome To? Shout out to multi, uh, Multitasking. Yeah. Oh, Welcome we're putting it in what? Discord? Multiplayer solitaire anyway. Yeah, apparently. I don't know. I'm not looking because I was instructed not to. Uh, well, we don't want it to influence your... Like, I'm, I'm trying to win some money here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Vegas odds going. <laughs> what does Vegas think I'm a shepherd? Come on. Am I wearing a thing that says shepherd? No, it says Armstrong. Is that, is that made out of wool? What do they think? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Upon the table, she places a curious wooden object, like an abacus, but without beads. In her hands, she holds eight unusual cards. Let us begin the casting. The gypsy places the first two cards upon the table. They are the cards of honesty and compassion. She says, consider this. Entrusted to deliver an uncounted purse of gold, thou dost meet a poor beggar. Dost thou A, deliver the gold, knowing the trust in thee was well placed, or B... Show compassion, giving the beggar a coin, knowing it won't be missed. Ooh, all right. So, man, I you know, I think a lot of people, um, and I, maybe it depends on where you live, right? Because if you live in New York City, you probably pass beggars all the time. You literally couldn't give every beggar uh, some money. Um, but uh, we do get our fair share in Central Florida uh, of people. But, and I, you know, I... Sam's Club parking lot. Somebody will walk up to me and they'll ask for something. I'll give them some of my groceries, some money out of my pocket. Back when I used to actually carry cash, never carry cash anymore. But I have to tell no you. more cash. Yeah, it's cashless. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, maybe the beggars have 
uh, stripe now. I don't know. But uh, I have to say that I take it very seriously when somebody trusts me with something. So delivering the gold. So hold on. Are, are, are we going for fun factor here or are we trying to be as close to what we would you, do? You do whatever you want, man. I'm doing Okay, me. well, let me ask. What are you doing? I'm what, doing what, me. What route are you going? You're going? Okay. I'm doing me to see what character class Ultima 4 thinks I should be. So I am going with A, deliver the gold, knowing the trust in me was well placed. <laughs> All right. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of valor and honor. She says, consider this. During battle, thou art ordered to guard thy commander's empty tent. The battle goes poorly, and thou dost yearn to aid thy fellows. Dost thou A, valiantly enter the battle to aid thy companions, or B, honor thy post as guard? Ooh, now this is, this is a tough one for me, right? Because my instinct is to just valiantly enter the battle to aid my companions. But, but... It's a distraction to get you off your post. Right. Like, there might be something important in that tent, right? I, You know, I, who... Your commander... I got to know my commander, right? I'm going to say my commander isn't an idiot, right? It's empty as in it doesn't have a person in it, but I bet there's some important crap in there, right? Like, there's a reason I'm guarding this stupid tent. So Maybe you're the distraction. <laughs> Well, maybe. Maybe I'm a sucker. Maybe I do I'm like that the questions are actual d tough questions. It's not just like, would you save the world or burn down an orphanage? Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's what's special about this, right? Because it's there are no wrong answers, basically. There, there aren't supposed to be right or wrong answers. It's just, what do you lean towards more? And now your character is that. So I, I'm going to say, again, uh, you know, some trust has been put in me uh, to guard this tent and I have to feel like there's a reason I'm there. So I'm, I'm going to guard the tent, even though man, do I want to get in the battle and aid my companions. I'm, go I'm going with honor. And you might get some of, you might not get these same questions, but you might get some of these same questions. So, sure. so, you know, feel free to crib off my notes later. No, I just, <laughs> so as a follow up to this video, maybe sometime we could do Morrowind slash uh, fallout because they have a very similar system that they probably got from this. Fallout? Fallout uh, three, 3 starts out in the the vault, and it's like somebody beats you up and takes your oh, sweet. Oh, yeah, room. I remember that now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean. And also, Tunnel Snakes rule. If people think this is cool, then, uh, yeah. It'd be a good follow-up. All right, cool. Uh, Bob says that you're going to be um, a paladin. He says I'm the commander's pet poodle, too, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. What? Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm not the commander's pet poodle. I'm the commander. Come on. Because um, I stayed at my tent. post. Your garden empty tents, bro. <laughs> Isn't that what the poodle would think? Yeah. I guarded that empty tent, so I'm still alive. So now All I'm in charge. Do think they're temporarily displaced uh, millionaires. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they definitely have the attitude for it. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, the gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They're the cards of spirituality and humility. She says, consider this. Thy parents wish thee to become an apprentice. Two positions are available. Dost thou A, become an acolyte in the spiritual order, or B, become an assistant to a humble village cobbler? All right, th this one's this one's an easy no-brainer for me. I don't know if you guys know which is the answer for me. But I one, I'm not a spiritual order kind of guy. And B, like, I would be cool with being the humble village cobbler. Like, I, yeah, job I, security. Well, not just that. Like, I... I mean, my, my job is sit in front of a computer and work with my brain and write documents, right, and stuff, whatever. You know, mm -hmm. like, I do a lot of brain stuff for my job. But I have worked a lot of, I've worked on a farm, you know, in an yeah. orange grove, done a lot of agriculture type stuff. And, like, I enjoy, I enjoyed that. I enjoy working with my hands, you know, being outside, whatever. So I, I got to think like a humble village well, cobbler in his Keep in mind, too, I that. that. You, you've only guarded one empty tent. You're not qualified to be an acolyte. Oh, come on. You got to work your way up. <laughs> when that tent's full in your garden, it give me a call. <laughs> All right. I went with B. All right. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of justice and sacrifice. She says, consider this. During a pitched battle, thou dost see a fellow desert his post, endangering many. Ooh. <laughs> As he flees, he is set upon by several enemies. Dost thou, A, justly let him fight alone, 
or B, risk sacrificing thy own life to aid him. Wow. See, this is compounding, because it's not would you help or not, it's would you help at risk to yourself. Well, yeah, I mean... I... It's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough call. Yeah, it's Can I ask what it means by a pitched battle? That's just a really Pretty, tough you know... battle. Heated battle. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, like, you are you are busy elsewhere doing other things. Well, it's kind of implying, I guess, that there's a bit of a lull where you're at, so that you have time to make this kind of decision. Because okay. you know, if it was that heated where you were standing, you wouldn't be all like, "All right, everybody, time out. I'm gonna no. go help that guy." Nah, but well, that's again, what I'm saying. again, I'm reading. I'm gonna read a little into this, kind of like what Tiffany was talking about, right? This is a pitched battle, so. Going off to help this guy and risking myself means I'm not around to help with the pitched battle, right? If I go and try to help him and I get killed, I don't get to help with the battle, which presumably I care about. Um, and this guy, man, he deserted that empty tent he was guarding. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is you. He comes full no, no, circle. No, no, no right? but it's a, it says endangering mini, right? And that's what really gets me. It's the endangering mini, so I'm going to let him fight alone. Sorry, buddy. You just so on that up. sacrifice card was that a cheetah or a rodent of unusual size? No, I didn't. I couldn't I didn't, tell. I didn't look. You thought it was a cheeto? No, yeah. cheeto. Kind. It's big it was Chester ones cheetah. Or the Chester, little crinkly yeah. ones. You know, there's Chester's a name. There's a name for the cheeto dust on your fingers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got its own name, like it's called delicious. Or something. I don't know. I it's it's cheeto. Che oh, it's cheeto. It's cheeto. cheeto. There you cheeto. go. Like Sorry. Don Cheeto. Were he in Hotel Rwanda? No, like C H E E T L E, but pronounced the same. Yes. <laughs> All right. The gypsy person. I'd like to think that that's a stage name, and that's why he chose it. <laughs> Don Cheeto Dust. <laughs> that was in his uh, uh, B movie days. Um, yeah. uh, the, the ones behind the B curtain at uh, Blockbuster. Uh, <laughs> the gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of honesty and justice. She says, Consider this. A merchant owes thy friend money, now long past due. Thou dost see the same merchant drop a purse of gold. Ooh, dost thou A, honestly return the purse intact, or B, justly give thy friend a portion of the gold first? Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's I, getting real, huh? This is maybe the toughest one yet for me. Because uh, I'm sort of... I'm sort of on both sides of this, right? Like, uh, yeah. I don't think there's a jury in the Seven Kingdoms that would convict you of this. No, but I, I, I mean, I think the implication is here is that you get away with it, right? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like you, it, you give it, you still give the guy the gold. So maybe that's your, maybe if it were me, I would give him the gold and be like, oh, Brosif, I also took those 30 gold that you owed my friend. So just so you know, when it feels what, a little lighter. Here's what I would do. I would give the money to the friend and go, you do with this what you will. He's the one owed money. You let him make the yeah, Well, there's no choice C, unfortunately. You know what? I'm you making what? my own. I, you, the, I'm not going to judge. I don't know. Maybe this merchant needs this money to pay his rent, to keep his business going. Maybe he's got a reason that he needs it all and hasn't paid the guy back, even though it's long past due. And honestly, and honestly, I like being honest. So uh, I'm going with A. I'm going with A. I'm returning the purse intact. I feel like... If this was a community vote, I would get outvoted, but I'm going with A. <laughs> All right. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. Cards of honor and humility. She says, consider this. Thou art at a crossroads in thy life. Dost thou, A, choose the honorable life of a paladin. Somebody already picked me as a paladin. Come on. Striving for truth and courage, or B, choose the humble life of a shepherd and a world of simplicity and peace. Ooh, now this is tough, right? Because if I were a young, strapping gent, I, I would go A all the way, easy. But this says you're at a crossroads in that life, which makes me think that I'm older, right? And yeah, I can you, tell you... You don't have a lot of service left in you. I can tell you that a world of simplicity and peace sounds pretty good at the moment. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Simplicity and peace, or striving for truth and courage. You know what? Maybe in real life, if I had to choose, I would end up choosing B, because B sounds so tempting, but I'd like to think I'm the guy that would choose A. So well, I'm going to choose point, A. Point of order, 
earlier you talked about how you would love to be a cobbler in a small village, and now you're given that chance, and you're saying, Whoa, no, 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 I'm no. going to be a paladin. No, 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 between spiritual order and cobbler. Oh. I said I would be fine being a cobbler. So if it's religious, I've you're sort of done it, that. If you get to stab people, you're yeah, in. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I've, I've lived the rural agricultural life doing the agricultural stuff, and I, I would live my whole life like that. That's fine, right? But wait a minute. But is it choice isn't between paladin... being a paladin and that? Uh... Isn't a paladin just like that acolyte thing, but you're enforcing the actual religious doctrine? <laughs> well, is it? That's literally it says, what a paladin is. Well, but this says, striving, this, says, this says striving for truth and courage. It doesn't say a paladin of the spiritual order. Like, I I'm not going to the Crusades in the Holy Land. Feel free to pick it. I just yeah. wanted the discussion. Yeah, no, no, no. I, uh, exactly. I feel like it's more like knight than paladin. Right. Ira. I'm with Iraq on that one. I'm, I'm going with A. I'd like to think in real life I would choose A, even though probably <laughs> it would be B. Uh, but hey, you know, I, I, I'm idealizing myself here. All right. The Gypsy places the last two cards. Ooh, the last two cards upon the table. They are the cards of honesty and honor. Boy, those two things aren't close at all. She <laughs> says, consider this. Ooh, sorry. Before I read it, I just got to think. I just got to think. Honesty and honor. All right. Thou art sworn to protect thy lord at any cost, yet thou know he hath committed a crime. Authorities ask thee of the affair. Dost thou A, break, break thine oath by honestly speaking, or B, uphold honor by silently keeping thine oath? And it doesn't tell us anything about the crime. Because, like, if the crime was genocide, I'd be like, that dude fucked up. <laughs> right? Genocide's one step over the line, sir. Ah, oh, yeah. But if it was like, oh, uh, yeah, he has a parking ticket he didn't pay. I mean, you know, I don't know. Does it? I guess the point is it doesn't matter. Honesty is honesty, right? That's true. Um, yes, sir. Honor or honesty? Oh. You break thine oath by honestly speaking up. Sworn to, sworn to protect thy lord at any cost, which is a weird oath I don't think I would ever take. But, but you did. You chose but I did. Buddy. You chose power. You swore I did. the oath, man. This, I, 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 I could have been a shepherd. I could have been a shepherd, but I didn't. That's I right. To be you the could have been a shepherd, but here's where you are because of these choices. Yeah. yeah. And, lo and Lord, and Lord Dumbutt, who had me guarding the empty tent earlier, uh, has some traffic tickets, and uh, he hasn't paid them. <laughs> he double parked um, his mule. Oh boy! I'm this gives a very weird version of paladins. <laughs> I, uh, you know what? I think some things are more important uh, than uh, than my oath, including the truth. I'm gonna go with A. I'm gonna break my oath. And tell the truth. With the final choice, the incense swells up around you. The gypsy speaks as if from a great distance, her voice growing fainter with each word. So be it, thy path is chosen. There is a moment of intense, wrenching vertigo. As you open your eyes, a voice whispers within your mind, Seek the counsel of thy sovereign. After a moment, the spinning subsides, and you open your eyes to, hopefully not Ra more blue. Ranger, ranger, ranger. I am a mage. A mage? Uh, Did not see that. Oh coming. my god, I was right the first time. I changed my mind a whole bunch of times during that time. <laughs> I nailed it on the first guess. Look at oh, that. Man. Always trust your instincts, people. Always Bob. trust your instincts. Bob says his horse made an illegal left turn. Wow. Wow, Bob, I agree. Wow, I'm a mage. What do you know? He's um, a mage. Wow, staff, and I, I, I'm wearing a loincloth, and I have a staff, so there's a picture for you. All right, so I don't know how to actually reset this, so I'm just going to shut this down. Hopefully Zoom won't cry too shut much it about down, that, Steven. and then I will start shut it, up. it down. And while I am doing that, who is going to go next? Babe goes next. Babe goes next. All right, so let's talk about... Eric, I told while, you to stop calling me Babe. While I'm loading this up. <laughs> while I'm loading this up, I you do tell me... Won't. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I want to be the boat. Can I be the boat? You want to be the boat. Oh, no. a, if if you get a boat, you can get on the boat, but don't get sunk by the whirlpool. 
All right, so, all right, Tiffany, are we still seeing, yeah, it looks like on the feed we're gonna be all right. What, um, Tiffany, you have some choices to make. Ooh, babe's turn, babe's turn. Um, you babe need a name. is going to be. Ooh, Lexi, L-E-X-I. Oh, Didn't think you were gonna be babe's babe. Babe's turn, babe's turn. <laughs> Ooh, you know what, I need to make a guess. I am female. You are female. Okay, one second. I'm gonna make my guess, and then I'll actually sure. click that you're female. I'm not. I'm not debating it. The subject. Um, oh, oh, oh I, I know. I got my guess. I'm gonna put it in the YouTube chat. All right. I made my guess. John hasn't made his, but he can do it when he gets back. All right, female. All right, and now I'm just gonna skip through all this because it's the same. Yes. Did you read the book of history? I did. Of course. I think you mean the book of history. <laughs> yeah. All right, did you did you make your guess, John? Yes. Well, let me make a guess. Yeah, Martin made a guess, all right. I think I made a guess somewhere in there. Yep, I did, okay. <laughs> Bob. Yeah, funny. Bob, that's a good one. <laughs> I'm with Martin on this one. All right. Don't look, babe. No cheating. I'm not looking. Okay. I wouldn't know how to cheat anyways. I don't um, want to have to invalidate you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Don't right. do it. All right, Lexi, let us begin the casting. You get justice and sacrifice. Consider of usual size. Yeah. Consider this. During a pitched battle. Thou dost see a fellow desert his post, endangering many. As he flees, he is set upon by several enemies. Do you justly let him fight alone, or risk sacrificing thy own life to aid him? I had this one before. Yes, Where do you so fall? I have had the opportunity to think about this for myself because you had this one. And I feel like um as I pointed out before, if if it's if a pitched battle is a battle that's being tightly fought. I am not going to be di be distracted from what I'm doing to go f with support this guy that is running away anyways. Like he he's he's running away anyhow, so I'm not going to help him. I'm going to focus on what I was doing before. So I'm going to um, justly let him fight alone. All right, a two more cards: honesty and valor. Consider okay. this. Thou hast been prohibited by thy absent lord from joining thy friends in a close pitched battle. <laughs> Dost thou A, refrain so thou may honestly claim obedience, or B, show valor and aid thy comrades, knowing thou may deny it later? Little different than what I had earlier. It is yeah. a little different. And why specifically do you have to deny it later? Couldn't you just yeah, tell that's the truth? Rough. I would yeah, like I did tell it. The truth. Well, because yeah. because the the Lord's gonna spank you if you come clean later. Sorry. I mean, I know that might be a bonus to you, Iraq, but. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Is, are they using an onk shaped yoke for this horse? <laughs> That's really going all in on this. Simmer. That's a shield. Oh, okay. That makes. But you see where it's it's at, and yeah. his left arm seems to be gone. Like, what is this? Like eight bits? Come on, give him a break. <laughs> well, look, his left arm is gone. <laughs> The color palette was maybe 128, 256. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah. Well, but look at that blueness. Right there. Yes, so blue. <laughs> um, I think I am not going to, to to aid them in battle and then deny it later. Um, so I'm going to have to refrain so that I can honestly claim obedience. Ooh, I would rather just I would rather just help them and then tell my lord Hey, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> slap my slap me if you want, but all right, honesty, a eh? all right. Now you have a choice between compassion and spirituality. Consider this: thou hast been taught to preserve all life as sacred. A man lies fatally stung by a venomous serpent. He pleads for a merciful death. Dost thou a show compassion and end his pain, or b heed thy spiritual beliefs and refuse? Another new one. This is an easy one for me. 
Yeah, me too. Um, not, not to get too political, I am a fan of the right to die, a, a, a respectful death. So okay. I so would. So I, I have to. I have to say, you're sort of cheating here, <laughs> because Why? you're, you're, you have to imagine that your spiritual beliefs say that you shouldn't do it, because your that's actual true. spiritual beliefs you say you should do it. You just nullified half of the choice. Yeah, you nullified oh, half of it. So you're I, sort of cheating. Point. It's not fair. <laughs> okay, so I well, it's just saying I've been taught to preserve all life as sacred, and to be fair, oh, I have. That's fair. Okay. I have. Okay, that's fair. I just, I I don't want to let him die a painful death. I I think that's not fair. So I would, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think showing a quick death would be against life as sacred. Like they're, they're gonna die in a few minutes. Right. It's, just it's, it's a inevitable. Murder. I can tell well, you. Well, you don't I know. Can tell Maybe you somebody that... walks by with the antidote. You don't yeah, know. No, I I can tell you that plenty of spiritual belief systems don't think you should do this at all. And it's also possible that the deity could save the person at any given moment is one of the reasons why. So anyway. that does complicate things. Yeah. yeah. So I imagine you believed in one of those, but y you got it. A, I'm going with a compassion. Tiffany is the way of compassion. My compassion was like a beggar or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. In the coins, the, in, in the uncounted coin purse. Yeah. All right. Honor and humility. Consider this. Thou art at a crossroads in thy life. Okay, do you choose the honorable life of a paladin or the humble simplicity of a shepherd? Oh, uh, I am absolutely choosing the humble life of a shepherd. Oh, yeah. I do not want all that responsibility of the paladin. All right. I don't believe in anything strongly enough to be a paladin. <laughs> a world of simplicity you and You wouldn't peace. be a paladin of Gloomhaven? <laughs> no, I couldn't even be a paladin of Gloomhaven. Does Gloomhaven have Shepherd as a class? I don't know of any game that I has wish, Shepherd right. as a class other than Ultima. There's so. there's a summoner class that's got a lot of summons, so close enough. <laughs> All right. Now you get honesty and compassion. Consider this. Entrusted to deliver an uncounted purse of gold. Oh, there's the poor beggar. He's back. Got nothing from me, so now he's coming to you. <laughs> Do you deliver the gold? Or do you give the beggar a coin, knowing it won't be missed, knowing it won't be a problem? Some Robin Hood action going yeah, on. Yeah, you will not get busted. Nobody will ever know, except for that beggar who gets this coin that maybe they really need. Yeah, I probably would give them a coin out of the coin purse. Oh, she's going to show compassion where I was on the road of honesty. We are diverging. I would rather just go buy them a meal and then give them the meal, but... <laughs> That's not one of these options. Yeah. Since there's, there's not a McDonald's nearby. There's no, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, there's no Burger King nearby. That's funny. All right. <laughs> Burger King's probably more lore accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Justice and humility. Consider this. Unwitnessed, thou hast slain a great dragon in self-defense. A poor warrior claims the offered reward. Dost thou, A, justly step forward to claim the reward, or B, humbly go about life secure in thy self-esteem? No, I'm really an insecure person, so I would absolutely justly step forward and claim the reward. All right, you do if, that. If, you I'd do also, you. I'd kill the warrior. Oh. How dare you claim my... <laughs> I just want to say, if the person, if the dude came to me and he was like, I'm so down on my luck, I don't know what I'm going to do, I really need a break, I probably would be like, I just killed this dragon. Why don't you say you killed it? Like, I'll back you up. I'll say I saw the fight. Why don't you just claim the reward and give him some money? Yeah. You did all the work. Well, because, I mean... <laughs> Here's $10. Go to ye old Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. By the way, Bob said the Shepherd was a pretty decent character class. I think all of the character classes were decent. I mean, you can't... What was the Shepherd good at, though? Well, I, they had a sling. I remember that. <laughs> so they had some range. So their combat. entire class is that they found a sling on the ground outside. <laughs> I don't yes. remember, right? Yeah, I don't remember. Like yeah. What's your art type? What's rubbish. karma? Is that luck? But uh, probably. But you know, like I, uh, I'm a mage, and you know how level one mages are. They suck, right? Oh, kiss mm -hmm. for a ball into the darkness. But you know, I they they need somebody around to help them out. So maybe a shepherd can you know put a herd of sheep in front of me. <laughs> aggro the bad guy with some sheep or something i don't know it's all right sheep. compassion and justice consider this 
After 20 years, thou hast found the slayer of thy best friends. Friends, plural. Multiple. Wow. The villain proves to be a man who provides the sole support for a young girl. Dost thou A, spare him in compassion for the girl, or B, slay him in the name of justice? Ooh. Yeah, no. I have to Ooh. spare him in compassion for the girl. Compassion? You're going compassion? Yeah. Again? I have to. Yeah. Because... It's been so like, long. You know. It's been so long, and it's not like, I mean... I'm assuming I don't want this. Like, that's a lot of trauma that this girl is going to have to go through to be like, have her caregiver killed. And then yeah. she's going to be homeless, Plus, probably. And you, you know, your best friends, they was probably up to something. They probably they, they had, had it coming. It coming. They had it coming. <laughs> All right. We're going with compassion <laughs> again. With the final choice, the incense swells up around you. The gypsy speaks. As if from a great distance, her voice growing fainter with each word. So be it, thy path is chosen. And I'm almost positive I got this right. Tiffany is a bard. A bard. I called it. I forgot that was an option. Compassion is the bard. Yes. Each there are good virtues pipes. that align. Yeah. Hey, look. You're also wearing a loincloth. But you have a sling. <laughs> hey, you stole the sling from the shepherd, apparently. <laughs> Invalidating the shepherd class. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> robbed my sling. I retired. Uh, I wonder if I could just quit. Q. Babe, quit what did save. you guess? They didn't quit. Oh, well. I guess Druid. I guess uh... Ranger. All right, who's who's up next? While I straighten this out. John Stern. Okay, I'll go. All right, I'm gonna get the share ready again. Thank you, Martin, for sending that screenshot of all of the list because I now I, I know what they all are now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, so so John's up. John's up. What is John gonna be? Oh man, I don't know. Let me close Discord here. Well, I'm putting my my I'm doing YouTube chats where I'm putting my guesses. That's a pretty good guess from Martin, but I'm going to go with, ooh, I'm going to go with this, which we haven't seen. Oh, I shouldn't say that. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Has everyone chosen? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to let you know in a little secret. I can never choose the mean dialogue options in role-playing games. Oh, I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I'm, I'm with you, man. No. <laughs> I'm like, I got to live with this forever. I can't do it. I, yeah, I, I just don't, I can't be mean to people, even if they're digital. So what is your uh, character name here? Let's go with Billy. Billy, Billy. the Squire. Billy the Shepherd. <laughs> Billy the Shepherd. Is Billy a male or a female? Billy's a male. All right. It Full makes, name is Billiam. Makes no difference. Billiam. <laughs> John breezes through the book of history. Finds I'm the speed old I'm not perusing not it. So old. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, let us begin the casting, John. I mean, Billy. <laughs> Sacrifice and humility. Consider this. Thou art an elderly, wealthy, eccentric, <laughs> as, as you do. Thy oh, end is near. Dost thou, A, donate all thy wealth to feed hundreds of starving children and receive public adulation, or humbly live out thy life willingly, Willing thy fortune to thy heirs. See, my heirs tried to put me in a retirement castle, so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna donate it to the starving people. All right, sacrifice it is. Donate all thy wealth to starving children. All right. I like how there's no mid ground. Yeah. Wow. This could use four options of just like graded uh, <laughs> different results. I would like that. Given how many classes there are, I feel like there's room for that. Yeah. <laughs> Really? You haven't figured out the system yet? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Honesty and valor, consider this. Thou hast been prohibited by thy absent lord from joining thy friends in a close-pitched battle. Dost thou A, refrain so they may honestly claim obedience? Or, uh, you know, knowing you, you can deny it later, jump in and help out. I'm jumping in to help out. Yeah, valor! And I'm telling them later, I don't care. <laughs> You have to deny it later. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. 
<laughs> I'm letting them know the one, but it is. Oh, this is going to go great. Compassion versus spirituality. Consider <laughs> this. Thou hast been taught to preserve all life is sacred. All right. You're going to show compassion and it is pain or heed your spiritual beliefs and refuse. Oh, I'm hitting him with a big rock. Yeah. Oh, right. I think probably could do something a little more I, I, I assume at this point I only have a sling, so I think the big rock is more compassionate. <laughs> you could strangle somebody with a sling? Come on. I mean, not speaking from <laughs> personal experience, but there was that Maybe if you got the leather cow part directly that over the Adam's apple and just, like, <laughs> hold it tight, you could get it going. Yeah, clear, clearly this is very compassionate. All right, <laughs> compassion. All right, now you get justice and honor. Consider this. Thou hast sworn to do thy lord's bidding in all. He covets a piece of land and orders the owner removed. Dost thou A, serve justice, refusing to act, thus being disgraced, or B, honor thine oath and unfairly evict the landowner? Eh? Sounds like the beginning mm. to some fantasy novels I've read. Yeah. I, I don't think... Especially in today's climate, I don't think I'm going to choose to evict somebody, so... Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling them no thanks. I'm like, and by the way, earlier, I participated in that battle. Peace, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. You're still disgraced, though, buddy. You're That's disgraced. That's all right. You and your sling. Slick off <laughs> me and my grace. sling. <laughs> they just want to call me old Billy One Sling. <laughs> You know, I think that's a giant rat now that I'm seeing it again. I, I think told you that it's that a rouse. Giant... Yeah. <laughs> Justice and sacrifice. Consider this. During a pitched battle, you thou to see a fellow desert his post. That guy again. Are you going to let him again. fight alone justly or risk I'm sacrificing yourself to aid him? I'm going to hit him with the same rock. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's effective. <laughs> I kept it with me. It's a really good Just beaten rock. Save those enemies some time. Let's get this over with. Yeah. I'm going to let him fight on his own. All right. Compassion and valor. Consider this. Thou dost manage to disarm thy mortal enemy in a duel. He is at thy mercy. Dost thou A, show compassion by permitting him to yield, or B, slay him as expected of a valiant duelist? I, uh, this is where my guess for John goes out the window. Yeah, uh, I'm going to assume that there's a fairly uh, strong justice system and that he will spend the rest of his life in, in jail. And whoa, I'm fine whoa, 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 whoa. This is like Middle Ages, man. What are you talking about? Right? Well, when I say the rest of his life in jail, I mean seven days before he, he dies yeah. of dysentery. He, he is well, your, hold on, though. He is your fair, mortal enemy. It now, doesn't think... say he committed a crime. You just guys, you just yeah. have a he is, Maybe he just, right. he got the last bagel. Nah, but wait, wait, closed. wait a minute. What would it take for somebody to be your mortal, mortal enemy, John? Not much. Uh, Not... I have a lot of hate to give. Uh, <laughs> He's like, you're dangerously close right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You keep questioning my decisions. I'm, I'm getting the rock. Um... So let's 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 just take the wording apart a little bit. I assume if it's a mortal enemy, it means I want him dead. So if it's enough that I want him dead, I don't know why I. Yeah, I mean, kill like him. he killed your puppy and your. Uh, so high I'm gonna go sweetheart. John Wick on him. Yeah, you. The puppy's where I draw the line. Yeah, I mean, there you go, John Wick. <laughs> B Billy Wick here, Billy Wick, John's Billy ancestor. Wick. <laughs> slay him as expected of a valiant him. duelist. Yep. To, you're to going. Count. You're going with B. All right, we're going B. Ah, oh, valor versus justice. Consider this. Thou hast been sent to secure a needed treaty with a distant lord. Thy host is agreeable to the proposal, but insults thy country at dinner. I mean, that happens to me all the time. Dost thou A, valiantly bear the slurs, or B, justly rise and demand an apology? <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to picture you doing B. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what'd I you would, say? I... In real life, I'm I'm rising up. I'm, I'm gonna I eat the last two pieces of pot roast, then I'm standing up and flipping the table. Uh, you I did assume... not just put the robber on my wheat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you roll seven again. <laughs> I, I assume that if I'm being sent as a diplomat, that it would be really dumb for me to throw a treaty out the window because the king's an ass. So I'm gonna just deal with it. You're going with A. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so be it. I think I nailed it again. Thy path is chosen. John is our tank. Uh -huh. He's a fighter, 
Instead of accurate. wearing a loincloth, he's wearing leather chaps, and he has an axe. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, we needed some. We needed somebody to stand up front. We needed a front heads. line. Yeah. All right, pretty good Pretty good party so far. Have yeah, to say. I'll say. All right. Now, we'll let Erox screw it up. Yeah, close That's your, what I'm here for! Close your eyes, babe. What? what? Don't look at, don't oh, look at this part. Minimize. Hold on, That's all. Oh, I haven't put my guess up yet, but I have one. I got, I got, I got you, man. I got you. This thing is surprisingly accurate. It feels. <laughs> Does it? Yeah, I, I, mage. I, I absolutely would was play I a fighter mage? in a game like this. I was yeah. expecting to be like a paladin or a tinker or something, but mage. Well, you, you right off the bat, you're like, I'm not gonna do this whole religion thing. So paladin's right out the well, window. Well, yeah, you're. Well, I was thinking more like knight than paladin. All yes. right. For... If if knight was an option, yeah. I would have chosen knight for you. Oh boy! All right, I'm going. I'm going here. I'm going there with my guests. Put my guests in YouTube. All right, Iraq. What is your character name? Is it Iraq? My character's name is Ukla the Mock. Oh, of course. U K L A T H E M O K. There we go. Oh, no spaces. Boo. Yeah, I took the spaces out. All right. Is that good? You good with that spelling? Yep, that's my name. All right. Male or female? I am male. I figured. I'm sorry, it was I identify as male. Male. Yeah. Ah, uh, reading the book of history. Is again. cleric an option? Cleric no. is not. When you fight in this game, is it a single person or is it a party? It's a whole party. Okay. You could have so there's no healer in, in this party, parties? I think. No, some of them have healing abilities, like the druid, maybe. Oh, druid, the paladin, paladin, the bard. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what the bard does. Sings, you know. I don't know. Makes people feel better with their songs. All right, E Rock. I really don't know if I got you, but I'm two. I'm two for two so far. So let's see. Let us begin the casting. Honesty and justice, right up front. Consider this. A merchant owes thy friend money. Now long past due. All right, you giving the purse back intact? Are you taking the portion out that uh, your buddy is owed? Not my, my money. I'm not giving him any. A, honesty? Honesty, yep. <laughs> All right. It's not my money. It's, it's like, like honesty is the last thing I expect out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. How did I get roped into that? All right. <clears throat> Compassion and sacrifice. <laughs> Consider this. Thee and thy friends have been routed and ordered to retreat. In defiance of thy orders, dost thou, A, stop in compassion to aid a wounded companion, or B, fight the giant rat. <laughs> Sacrifice <laughs> thyself to slow the pursuing enemy so others may escape. Just grab his ankle. No, I will help my wounded companion, yes. All right. A, I got this rock you can I borrow. <laughs> <laughs> I... I I think it's interesting that no choice is, you know, do the retreat I was ordered to do. <laughs> right? Like, exactly. It's not, it's not a choice of In this In defiance one. of In this. In defiance oh. of, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. A, compassion. Bam. All right. Honor versus spirituality. Consider this. In thy youth, thou pledged to marry thy sweetheart. Now thou, now thou art on a sacred quest in distant lands. Thy sweetheart asks thee thee to keep thy vow dost thou a honor thy pledge to wed or b follow thy spiritual crusade hmm so it's implying that if i decide to wed her that i leave the thing that i'm doing you don't you have yeah. to that's that's go against home. their vows you don't get to go on your sacred quest your spiritual crusade you have to uh Stay home and take care of your sweetie. As a matter of fact, follow my spiritual card. crusade. Sorry, you're going with spirituality. That's the babe answer. Bam. <laughs> Valor and humility. Consider this. Although a teacher of music, thou art a skillful wrestler. <laughs> that's, of that's course, all true. yes, it's <laughs> true to real life. Naturally. Thou hast been asked to fight in a local championship. Dost thou a 
accept the invitation and valiantly fight to win, or B, humbly decline knowing thou art sure to win. <laughs> I like I'll how win. music has nothing to do with this. <laughs> You can hum some bars, but it doesn't mean anything well, to the. I, I think I think the reason for that is to say like I mean wrestling isn't your thing, right? Like if you were a wrestler and that was your job and that's what you do, like of course you're gonna wrestle. But this is like well you're a music teacher, so this is just a side gig. <laughs> when E Rock's fighting, he's like make like a note and B flat, and then he throws <laughs> him to the ground. <laughs> hmm. This is somehow way harder than it should be. <laughs> I love that. Even uh, though you're probably sure to win. In real life, part. humbly decline knowing thou art sure to win. So humble that you are it's sure It's a whole to win. lot less effort than <laughs> actually doing it. <laughs> Humility equates laziness <laughs> for Iraq. All right. <laughs> Humility, B. <laughs> Is that guy lazy? He's just very humble. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Honesty and compassion. Seen. Consider this. Entrusted to deliver an uncounted purse. And this beggar is back, baby. What's he up? He is relentless. <laughs> He's hit at least three of us. I think he might have dodged John. I don't remember. Yeah, he, he knew he wasn't getting nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's not my money. I give him some of my money, but that's not my money. A, honesty. Yes, sir. Bam. The trick is when you're walking past the beggars, you hold the rock and you look menacing and they don't ask you for coin. <laughs> Spirit... Just keep your window rolled up. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> On your horse. On your horse. <laughs> <laughs> Spirituality and humility. Consider this. Thy parents wish thee to become an apprentice. All right. What are you doing? I'm going to the spiritual order. Oh, yeah. There you go. No I want to make shoes. village cobblers around here. I don't even like shoes. <laughs> the shoes are for other no, people. No, it's a peach you cobbler. You don't sample your own product, haven't you learned? <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, the last two cards upon the table. I'm looking here. I'm looking here. Wow, I... Oh. Okay, sorry. Honesty and spirituality. Consider this. Thy friend seeks admittance to thy spiritual order. Thou art asked to vouch for his purity of spirit, of which thou art unsure. Dost thou A, honestly express thy doubt, or B, vouch for him, hoping for his spiritual improvement? How good of a friend. <laughs> thy friend. My friend. <laughs> if he was murdered, whoever killed him would be your mortal enemy. <laughs> Ah, you're unsure. It doesn't say that you don't think. It says you're unsure, right? You don't know yeah, about this guy. I've got, you know, kind so of you... an Italian heritage and vouching for people is some serious business. So you're going to honestly express your doubt? So it doesn't say you're saying not to bring him in. You're just like, I don't know. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. I think the implication. I'm not blowing him up. I'm I just think saying, the implication is you are blowing him up. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Honestly, I'm not so sure. So sorry, honesty. Honesty, man. That. Yeah. I. I what do you think you are? Because I think I know. Um. A mage. Thy path is chosen. I had you as a paladin. And I was thinking maybe, maybe an outside chance at Ranger, which if you had chosen spirituality here, I think you would have been a Ranger. But no, you're on with me in Honest Land of the Mage. Hey, I made a mage. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, amazing. Two mages, a bard, and a fighter walked into a bar. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, right? That's not a bad team. Yeah. Yeah, after, after we might struggle a little bit in the very beginning, right? Our team name is the Slingless. <laughs> a lot of loincloths <laughs> around here. All loincloths, no slings. <laughs> so, all right. So, so to look at my chart here. So the way the way this whole thing worked is, it's basically you know it's comparing two random virtues against, and then it's doing a tree. It's just advancing tournament style the ones that you pick yeah right and narrowing right. them down narrowing them down and then the final one you choose is the most important is your character class so i think 
So the way that the chart looks to me is the virtue of honesty is the class mage, which starts at moon glow, has full magic ability, plus three intelligence, cloth armor, best ranged weapons are a sling and a magic wand, and the best melee weapon is a dagger. If someone had chosen, oh, say, compassion, uh, they would be a bard who would start in Britain. Uh, bards have half magic ability. Instead, Only mages have full magic ability, so bards have half, but they have a plus three de to dexterity, um, they start with leather. All right. A crossbow and magic wand are the best ranged weapons. So, hey, a bard's good with a magic wand. And sword is their best melee weapon. All right. So That's if, you, babe. That's me. So Valor, of course, gives you a fighter. And you start in what's probably pronounced as Jellum, I'm going to say. Because I don't know how you pronounce J-H-E-L-O-M. Uh, you have zero magic ability, of course. Uh, plus three strength, though. You uh, Best armor is plate or magic chain. Magic mm. Chain is something that uh, Snoop Dogg sings about, I think. I don't know. <laughs> uh, your best range weapon is a crossbow. Your best melee weapons are a halberd, a magic sword, or axe plus two. I don't know what, what axe plus two means. All right. The uh, plus indicates that it's a higher level of, of item. <laughs> I guess, but how is that your best melee weapon? X plus two. Like, why isn't it? It might be talking about, two, like, starting best. weapons. No, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's just you can find a thing called axe plus two in the game, I guess. Yeah. If any of us had picked Justice, which none of us, of course, did. Um, justice, what's that? Um, <laughs> druid. That's how you become a Druid. You start in you. You have three-quarter magic ability. It gives you a plus one to dex and intelligence. Uh, you start with leather. Uh, no, sorry, your best your best armor, sorry, is leather. Not what you start with, sorry. And uh, crossbow and magic wand. And a mace is your best melee weapon. So, yeah, Druid is a lot like a cleric, it sounds. Yeah. Uh, although they can't wear chain, so, well. Uh, uh sacrifice sacrifice is what makes you a tinker so uh, i think you, that'd be yeah. yeah something about them uh serving the community or whatever i know there's a whole story behind it but my is their starting city they actually have one quarter magic ability so a little bit plus one to dexterity and strength they can wear plate uh crossbow and magic axe is their best ranged weapon it's like a boomerang but it's an axe you throw uh hmm. and halberd and magic sword are their best melee weapons Paladins, of course, would come from honor. And so none of us are very honorable, apparently. Uh, no paladins amongst us. But it's not spirituality that makes you a paladin. It's honor. Uh, they start intrinsic. They have half magical ability, plus one intelligence and strength. Plate and magic plate is their best armor. It looks like they're the only three people who can wear magic plate. Cool. Crossbow, magic axe, halberd, and magic sword. All right, two more. Spirituality is what makes you a ranger. Uh, and then you start in a town that I cannot pronounce called Scarabray. There actually is a place in northern Scotland um, called Scarabray. I think it's a, like an archaeological place, a mon uh, oh. dig or whatever. Um, I almost went there, but it didn't work out. Um, anyway, uh, so there is an actual pronunciation of that, and I still don't know it. Um, and they have half magic ability, one dexterity, one intelligence, one strength, uh, not one, but plus one. That's <laughs> all those. One <laughs> intelligence, yeah. Uh, they can wear leather, crossbow, and magic bow. All right. So they are your really good ranged, not, not surprising, ranger. Uh, sword and magic sword. Cool. And last but not least is the humble shepherd. So humility makes you a shepherd. You start in Magencia. You have zero magical ability. No stat bonus. You can wear leather. Your best ranged weapon is a sling, and your best melee weapon is a sword. So it does kind of sound like they suck. <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you do as a shepherd? I, I, I Bob said they're actually a pretty good class, but I don't know why. What was their line? What was their uh, attribute line? Is it none. They get no bonus to anything. I mean, uh, what was the op, you know like the uh, choices? Uh, humility. 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 Yeah, I'd end up on humility, which is why none of us are shepherds. Yeah. Um, Humble I mean, people. Four people, people who actively go on YouTube filming yeah. themselves yeah. are humble not people. humble. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's weird. <laughs> Care nothing for justice or honor either. It does, does not add up. I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> most shepherds are unskilled in any form of combat. Oh. It's yeah. like playing a regular human in a fantasy world. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. It's like you're know. taking features away as you go on, you know? It seems You're like, to wait, be... you don't want to buy one? Hold on. It's actually worse than you thought. If I remember correctly, they're also like the last character you typically find. They were a little hard to find, too. The uh, the uh, 
Katrina, Katrina, the shepherd. If you're not a shepherd, Katrina is there, and you can add Katrina. Well, they're so humble, yeah. you know. They didn't grab your attention ever, so. Yeah. They were actually in the party the whole time. You just didn't know. <laughs> there it is. They yeah. were in the back. Well, you just lure. <laughs> oh, you're in the party? I thought you were just hanging out. Or at right. the end of the game, you're giving out rations. You're like, wait a minute, why is this eight ways divided? <laughs> Shepherd shouldn't have to eat. The shepherd should be providing the lamb. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Ultima 4. Go get it from uh, GOG if you want. Download it yourself. Uh, maybe I'll put a link in the comment to it so you could just go grab it. It's free. Uh, you can play it. You can just screw with the character creator like I did. You can play through the game. Like I said, it was pretty interesting in uh, you know how it uh, focused on just sort of bettering yourself and making sure you achieved uh, enlightenment, essentially. Uh, not so much the evil uh, creature, you know, putting a pall over the land that you have to lift or whatever. So, yeah, there you go. Um, I wonder what some of these other people in the chat would have ended up as, like Bob and Martin. Maybe maybe I'll let them run through it next time we have a uh, members, members quarterly chat. Because, hey, we do have... YouTube memberships, you could subscribe to Just Got Played and uh, support our channel, right. uh, which would be nice. We would appreciate that. But uh, we also appreciate you, you know, hitting the subscribe button, hitting that like button, uh, you know, sharing our content with people. And then, of course, come on over to the Discord channel to chat with us. If you want to talk about things like this, we are always blabbing about stuff. Normally, we're blabbing about, blabbing about board games, not, uh, not uh, computer games. But this was, you know, part of my childhood, and I think it's... You know, the foundation of even a lot of these uh, role-playing games, tabletop games uh, that we play now. So anyway, that's why I wanted to share. I just want to add really quickly that if you write a letter to 10 people telling them how good we are and to watch our show, good fortune will follow you. <laughs> Bringing back the chain mail. Sure you're not a shepherd there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'm Steven. That's Tiffany. That's John. That's E Rock. We're from Just Got Played. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you next time. Let's play us an outro. <laughs> <laughs>